Let me read to you a passage from the second chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 22 and then verse 39 to 40. It's the Gospel for the Feast of the Holy Family, which is the Sunday following Christmas, Christmas Day. St. Luke writes, When the time of their purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him, Jesus, to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. That's from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 and verses 39 to 40. And what does that picture of the Holy Family suggest to us? Well, it is surely agreed by all that one's own family is the most important reality in one's life. If in any particular case this is not so, then all would understand that there is something deficient there. People long to have a good family life, and where this is so, it provides some of the greatest joys in life. Sadly, all too often, this is not so. And as the years proceed, tensions and difficulties not only remain, but increase. And as the children grow up and disperse, perhaps the situation is gradually accepted with regret. Perhaps it is felt that nothing much can be done to redress and remedy the problem, whatever the problem might be. But how they wish it were otherwise. Family life is profoundly rooted in the nature of man and is deeply connected with his earthly happiness. Inasmuch as God is the author of nature, the fact that nature bespeaks the importance of, fam of the family shows that he wills that family life be a central contributor to human happiness. Well now, let us notice this. At the dawn of history, God created Adam and then gave him Eve, his wife. That is to say, he gave man family life, which would be a principal source of his happiness. But what happened? Together, the man and his wife turned away from God, and thus sin entered the world, and with sin, death. Out of the family life which God brought into the world to give man his happiness came untold suffering flowing from deliberate sin. Ever since then, which is to say, from the dawn of human history, family life has remained the source of man's deepest joys and at the same time the source of man's greatest sorrows. The spark of the divine imprint has remained in the family, but the terrible presence of man's sin and its results has also remained. And so the cry arises from the heart of broken man, if only family life could be made new, if only there could be regained what had come from the hand of God at the beginning. If only something of this could appear on the earth, be manifested, and then shared with mankind. Well, the good news is that this has indeed happened. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, not to condemn the world for its sin, but to save it, and to give to it life everlasting. This gift of grace and eternal life is intended by God to make man new and his family life new. The hope of mankind for a profound renewal and for a release from the bondage of sin has been answered in the coming and in the mission of Christ. At the heart of God's answer to sin is his gift of grace to the family. God the Son in becoming man was born into a family. That family, so humble, so lowly, so hidden, so very ordinary, 
so immersed in the humdrum of life common to the vast family of man, was filled with grace and free of sin. At its centre was the holy child, the holy youth, the holy young man, Jesus Christ. He, the fount of divine life and grace, was the heart of the holy family. In him was present God himself, God the Son made man. His mother Mary was, as the angel had addressed her, full of grace. The Lord was with her, without qualification. She was preserved free of sin from the instant of her very conception, and this by the power of grace won for her by her future son. And how holy must have been her spouse, Joseph, the foster father of the Christ child. We have in that holy family the sparkling jewel of mankind, the great pearl hidden in the field. And we must do all we can to gain that pearl, bringing Jesus, Mary and Joseph into our life, shaping our family life. Jesus is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Mary is his mother and Joseph is his foster father. Both are now with him in heaven. The inspiration of this holy family remains with the church and with all her members till the end of time, and is celebrated every year. How the heart of our Lord must have been interwoven with theirs, and how his happiness must have been nourished by the life of his holy family. As he hung on the cross, Mary his mother was with him to the end. His own family was a deep support, by then in the main out of sight, but certainly not out of mind. Today is the feast of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary and Joseph, the Sunday immediately following Christmas Day. Out of this family came the Redeemer, the Redeemer of the world, and also the gift of the Holy Spirit to mankind. The gift of Christ, who is the centre of the Holy Family. This family is the model family, the perfect family. There has been in history a perfect family, and that family was the family of Jesus Christ, himself the son, Mary his earthly mother, and Joseph her spouse and his foster father. Grace filled the life of that family. The same grace has come to each of the baptized, enabling each to aspire to a family life of holiness involving the conquest of sin. Let us then resolve to contemplate the Holy Family a great deal, to live by the grace that reigned in them, and to make our way gradually to holiness in Christ, especially in our family life.